Hello everyone, welcome back to The Real Starfighter, and today we're going to be putting the A-Wing pilots into a tier list, including the contents from the Phoenix Cell Pack. So here's a quick rundown of the tier criteria I use. Basically, tier 3 ships are filler, they don't do too much for your list, they're just there to be a cheap gun, or just to fill out the points. Tier 2 is usually a pilot that has an ability that you only get off maybe once or twice a game, but doesn't do too much for your list as a whole. Tier 1 pilots are pilots that have strong independency, they're reliable throughout the game, and they can perform multiple roles. And then Tier 0 ships are absolute game changers, they can win you the game all by themselves. So starting off with Tier 3, we have the Phoenix Squadron Pilot. Now I think the Phoenix Squadron Pilot is purely just filler. There's not too many things that it does other than just be a cheap uh, two dice gun, and that's pretty much it. It's cheap. It's nice, and it's got the three evade, so if there's things that mess with a lot of the evade dice, or maybe you just need the extra defense, then sure, go for the Phoenix Squadron Pilot as your filler. In Tier 2, we're starting off with the Green Squadron Pilot. Now, I thought the Green Squadron Pilot was a really good backbone for the beginning days of 2.0, but now the Green Squadron Pilot has just been reduced to the Tracer Carrier for larger swarm lists. So if you're looking for a cheap carrier for your tracers, I would pick the Green Squadron Pilot. It's a little bit better than the Phoenix Squadron Pilot, so go for that one. Next one we have is uh, Hobby. Now, I love Hobby a lot because he's an original Rogue Squadron character from the books and the novels and the, and the other media that we see Rogue Squadron in in the good old days of the 90s Star Wars. But at least he's back. He was in Rebels and... I really like his ability to remove a one red token as opposed to just a stress token. But getting that target lock and, uh, on him as opposed to getting other tokens just, in my opinion, hurts a little bit. And I don't see myself always in that position. I think it's a really nice, cool ability. Um, but being an initiative three, I would rather take some tokens than uh, some green tokens like focus or evade than take a target lock token. Because the A-Wing is such a Tier 1 ship in its own, there's a lot of pilots that, in my opinion, I consider Tier 1. So we're going to split Tier 1 into two halves. There's going to be a low, mid Tier 1, and then there's going to be a mid, high Tier 1. So starting off in the low end of Tier 1, we have Shara Bay. Now, Shara Bay has a similar ability to Hobby, but what makes her different from Hobby is Shara actually adds a die to the roll on spending a target lock. That means you're changing your two dice attack to a three dice attack. You're changing your three dice defense to a four dice defense. I like that a lot. You do so you still need a lot of setup for it to work, but I think the payout is definitely a tier one. The setup is a tier two, but the payout is tier one, and that's why I think she's a low uh, tier one. She teeters between tier two and tier one so much, but uh, I think that she is definitely deserves to be tier one just on the extreme low end. Next up, we have Sabine Wren. I think Sabine Wren is a really amaz has a really amazing pilot ability. She is a Concord Don Protectorate uh, with a Fen Rao type ability. Uh, the only thing that makes her go down a little bit is her Initiative 3. You're using her ability more for defense than offense. But I love that her ability rewards you for being range 1 and just being able to change a die at will of, all right, now I have... Uh, a defense, okay, cool, I get a defense. I need an offense, okay, I, now I get a hit. So I love her ability because it rewards you for flying well. Next, in the, right in the middle, is Ahsoka Tano. Now, Ahsoka Tano has a really awesome support ability, but she's really on the higher end of the mid-tier because she's so good in late game. I think if she's a ship you have at the end, I think she immediately becomes a high-tier one ship. But her pilot ability brings her down because it spends those crucial force charges. Ahsoka Tano having three force charges is incredible. I love it so much. You can use it for offense. You can use it for defense. And having three of them means you have so, uh, so many options and so many of them that you can spend two or three of them in a round and then spend time recovering them. But when you're using her ability to support another ship, now I think it's a great that you can support a, another ship even while they're stressed. But then you're taking away from her power to punch through things or to defend herself. And that just brings her down a little bit. But again, as soon as she's in the end game and she's your only ship, I think she can go nuts and it's incredible because all she needs to focus on is double repositioning and she lets the force tokens 
take care of the damage and the defense. Going to the mid-high tier, starting in right in the middle, right next to Ahsoka, is Wedge. Now, Wedge is always going to be amazing as long as he has that ability to make the defender roll one fewer defense die. Defense die, so many players who are inexperienced rely on them so much that Wedge just straight up punishes them for relying on them. And that's why I love him so much. I do like that they made it only in the front arc that you can use his ability. It just helps eliminate people wanting to use the card, uh, the configuration card, to throw the guns back. I think for the at least for the RZ ones, they're not really good for that because it's during the system phase. It's red. You really show your hand, and every time I use it, my opponent always has outs. Whenever I fly against it, I find so many outs for it because I know immediately at the beginning of the round. Oh, by the way, my guns are going backwards. So be prepared for that. Like, I don't like showing my hand that way. I think the RZ2s are much better for that because it's during activation when they do that and your opponent has already moved some ships and you're able to catch them. Next up, we have Harris and Dula. Hera has amazing bonkers ability. I think it's a really, really a good, perfect ability for being an ace pilot and a support ship all on its own. Being at initiative six, you move last, so you look at the board state and say, well, what does this ship over here need for it to survive this round? And you are able to take that token, boost in a range, and give it to them. Not only that, but you're able to protect yourself because you're a six, move last, and put yourself in a position to maybe soften a target by knocking down some shields, or just doing just doing that uh, chip damage. Just doing some chip damage to set up more powerful plays. I think that Hera is really good at that. Uh, but being a six, she is able to also be an ace on the board and a support ship simultaneously at all times. At the top of the tier one list, we have Arvel Krennan. Now, he is the only pilot in the game, I will say, that the lower his initiative is, the better he is. Uh, being at a three, I was very shocked because he was a three and 1.0. But I think if he was a two or a one initiative, he would be absolutely broken. His ability to shoot targets at range zero breaks the rules of x-wing now no now there's other ships that do that but his ability also to boost do a fail boost and just complete his fail boost as a partially executed maneuver is insane so now you're able to basically and i'm going to use the term loosely fly poorly and you're rewarded for it um being at range zero of a target and shooting them and not being not and for them not to be able to shoot you back is a great defense because you can go all out on your offensive role the other thing i love about arvel is he's great with nothing on him and he's great with everything on him if you have points to put predator on him he's great you have room to put intimidation on him he's great you have room to put juke on him he's great you have room to put proton rockets on him he's great you you could put anything on arvel krennan and it just makes him even better and the the, the variety of things you could put on him makes him even that much better just because you have so much versatility you don't need to put anything on him but you can and when you do you are immensely rewarded and you feel great about every time he gets all that stuff off because it breaks the rules of x-wing now for tier zero we have jake pharrell he's our only tier zero but the reason why jake is tier zero even being on initiative four is he's able to play the role of support ace and aggressive ship all in one go. His ability to triple action is incredible. I think if you can triple action, you're an immediately tier zero ship. You shouldn't be able to triple action this game consistently. But what Jake makes that triple action do is he's actually able to triple action himself and then pass more action to other people. Um, being able to barrel roll, focus on himself, do a boost, take that stress token, but then able to pass a focus action to someone else and have them do other things is incredible. I, I love Jake so much for that um, because the tier zero ability, the tier zero ability is bonkers. Um, so Jake is really great. Not only that, but whenever a whenever I go one on one with another opponent, and Jake is the last one on the board, and it's even happened when I faced against the Sundar Fell, we kind of just shake hands and end the game because we know that between Jake and their ace, no one's gonna die. Uh, to each other and we're just going to fly around for 20 30 minutes and not really get anything accomplished so i really do like jake i think he's an amazing pilot and I, he definitely deserves the tier zero status 
So anyway, this is my tier breakdown. These are the tiers as a whole. Uh, again, a lot of ships, a lot of pilots are in tier one because the A-Wing itself is a tier one ship. I see the A-Wing not really as an air superiority ship. I see it as an air support ship. I think any A-Wing can support a list to make that list more powerful, and that's its role. It reminds me a lot of the F-16, which it's not really there to do a ton of damage, but it's there to set up for a ton of damage to occur. And that's why I love the A-Wing so much. I think it's, like it's, again, it's there for setting up damage, but not necessarily for doing a lot of damage. So it's a it's a support ship. It's an ace. It's there for great for endgame. A lot of great things that the A-Wing does. It's just an all-around great tier one ship. And I love all the pilots for it. And I think we're really rewarded with the Phoenix Cell Pack getting pilots like Sabine, Ahsoka, Hera, a cheaper Wedge that allows us to fit him in the list because Wedge just gets so much love from the community because he is one of the cornerstone pilots of the X-Wing Miniatures game. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. If this video helped you out, share it with a friend. This place crawls, and remember to always check your six.